Please be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station, the management, and its network. Here's a cup of coffee to all of you. Uh, I take my coffee morning, noon, and uh, early afternoon. Or uh, Anyway, ito po ay uh, ang ika-20 po ng uh, Enero uh, 2021. Ano? Still uh, fresh uh, new new year, pero pasok na rin po ang uh, malapit na po ang Chinese New Year itong darating na Pebrero. So uh, gift giving is still in season. Uh, ating dalawang paksa po itong araw na to kasama ang ating co-host si Butcheran here who is now also a host of a new program on uh, the barangay uh, issues no? and our uh, regular uh, resource person on uh, US uh, matters uh, our former diplomat uh, in Was in our Washington embassy Ado Paglinawan is with us <coughs> to uh, help us uh, analyze what's going on in the US and what it means for us our second part is about cha-cha, uh, very controversial ngayon, but we'll talk about it and uh, show what the real Trojan horse cha-cha is. Ano? Uh, simulan po natin sa Estados Unidos, kaya po ang pamagat po natin, nightmare to nightmare. Bangungot, papunta sa isa pang bangungot. Bangungot nung panahon ni Trump na nag-trade war, na natalo naman ng US, uh, nag-race issue uh, at tumindi ang violence. Uh, Nagkaroon ng eleksyon na hindi matapos-tapos yung uh, mga aligasyon ng dayaan. At ngayon pinapasa naman kay President Biden na ang unang pinakamahalagang maunawaan natin po eh, the U.S. is facing a dollar collapse this year ano, by the end of 2021. Uh, uh, ang estimate po nitong uh, nag-project uh, po nito si Stephen Roach who is a Yale University professor and a a frequent uh, China visitor and a China expert, no? uh, nag-warning siya sa U.S. na babagsak ng 35% or mga 15 pesos, ano? kung kumpara sa peso, ano? 55, uh, 35% or more. No? 35% is around uh, 18 pesos. Ano? Eh, kita po natin ang ebidensya sa Philippine peso U.S. dollar exchange rate ngayon. Hindi naman kagandahan ng ating ekonomiya, tinamaan din ng COVID-19. Pero lumalakas ang Philippine peso. It is now 48.07 uh, centavos. 48 pesos, 0 0.07 centavos. I checked last night. Ano? Uh, that is uh, January uh, 28. Ano? Eh, bakit lumalakas ang Philippine peso? Dahil lalong humihina po uh, ang US dollar. And what does that mean? That means a very, very uh, serious matter for the US Dahil uh, pag bumagsak po, tuloy-tuloy yan hanggang 35% ang ibagsak. Ibig sabihin ang mga presyo ng mga bilihin ng Estados Unidos ay eh, tataas din ng ganyang kalaki. And anong kahulugan po sa social condition po, ay eh, baka talagang sumabog po ang, uh, ang uh, social and political situation. Kaya po ang Time Magazine, ito po ang nilabas. How President handle, uh, Biden handles a divided America will define his legacy uh, no? and uh, you know i'm showing all this is to uh, express this point you no know, that the op opinions we present here are informed opinions may mga basehan po hindi lang yung opinion ng mga naglalasing sa kanto ano uh, yung mga bidahan ng mga sobrang magagaling ano uh, at nagmamadunong all of us must have informed opinions that's why we are presenting more and more information to you uh, as we discuss our opinions too. So, iyan po ang pananaw ng Time Magazine and uh, uh, hindi naman tumitigil po yung sobrang politika nila, yung impeachment ni Trump. Sabi nga nitong si, um, I will not uh, have to look for her name, no? but uh, it's there, Yahoo News. Ano? Impeaching Trump will not heal the divide no? in the U.S., in their country. Pero tinutuloy po ano? and uh, matindi po ang uh, siyempre ang reaksyon ng mga pro-Trump po sa Estados Unidos to the point that uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, law and order authorities are warning. Uh, itong next headline po, po from Associated Press, U.S. terrorism alert warns of politically motivated violence. Ano? 
At ito po ay laganap po sa mga uh, pahayagan at uh, mga media ng Estados Unidos. Ano? Now, yung isang uh, plataforma ng Trump administration na mukhang dito sa pasimula eh, sinusunod ng Biden administration, whether it is nominally uh, or it's going to be a real one, we still can tell it's still too early. Uh, we're only a week, uh, a little more than one week into the Biden administration. Uh, pero ito po uh, ang totoo diyan sa economic situation and trade war ng Estados Unidos. Ang Bloomberg Weekly, uh, ay ito po ang headline, ano, How China Won Trump's Trade War and Got Americans to Foot the Bill. 3,000 American companies are demanding uh, that the U.S. government uh, uh, compensate them for their losses uh, dahil doon sa mga taripa. American companies uh, inaasunto ang kanilang gobyerno dahil sa kalugihan nila doon sa taxes na binayad nila doon sa importation nila from China. And uh, the, on the right side po, yung uh, chip industry ng Estados Unidos, uh, yung gumagawa ng microchips and so on, ay inuudyok. Uh, group urges Biden administration to review export controls on China. Kasi po, a malaking uh, kawalan po ng tubo for research and development, for product development ng American companies. Yung 20 to 30 percent of their profits are really coming from China. And uh, so this uh, is, uh, and the fact is, uh, even after the trade war in 2020, ang, ang Estados Unidos ay natalo sa China doon sa pag-aanyaya uh, at pag-aakit ng mga uh, foreign direct investment. Ano? Ang pumasok po na foreign direct investment, marami po dyan galing sa kanluran at galing sa mga mayayaman na kumpanya, investing companies sa Estados Unidos, eh ang China with $163 billion in inflows to the Chinese financial system and economy investing uh, in the profits uh, in the future from China's industries and commerce and so on. So these are all the facts that I have gathered for you also to think about. So let me turn to our co-host. Uh, I think you have some questions. Uh, you can start uh, put, uh, putting Ado in the firing squad. You know? uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Herman T. Laurel, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, before I ask my questions to Sir Ado, uh, I think yung, yung issue ng Time Magazine, uh, Biden's uh, handling of a divided America uh, would lead to his uh, greatest legacy. It's putting too much pressure on the President. Number one, uh, bakit ba naging divided ang America? It's not because they have uh, different dreams. Iisa lang naman din mga America uh, for the general welfare of everyone. Pero noong si Trump ang nakaupo, the former President, Ang naging pinaka divisive issue nila is racism because Donald Trump stoke whatever that is ingrained in uh, American blood regarding this uh, you know parang discrimination against uh, what they perceive as a lower class citizen in their country at mahirap i ano yon once you become president the hardest thing to change is what your bloodline tells you to do. Mm. I think America should and Biden should concentrate on moving on. Mm -hmm. Moving on with the economy, moving on with the social issues of the day in America, and moving on with uh, their international relationships with other countries, with their allies, which was damaged mm -hmm. due to this. Okay. So, uh, yeah. uh, Kaado, uh, with this, ano ho ba ang, how, how do you see this uh, panning out for President uh, Biden in the next uh, 100 days na lang muna po? Well, well uh, Ado, give us a background again, a very, very short background of your many, many years uh, of stay in the U.S. and how you met Biden and other uh, pol political leaders there. Well, uh, during the uh, 1986 80s? 80s, snap no. election, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, put up uh, Doy Laurel for our presidential candidate sa Unido. And uh, I joined that uh, movement with, the, with the former Vice President Emmanuel Pelaez. But uh, that campaign was superseded by the 
by Cory Aquino for President Movement. And eventually, the long story short, Cory Aquino became the president. And despite us being on the other side of that same uh, uh, Janus, so to speak, <laughs> Uh, we were drafted, the ambassador, uh, Pelias became the ambassador and I became his press attaché uh, and special assistant. Not only in Washington, D.C., but when uh, Claudio T. Hanke died, uh, we also had, uh, we were seconded to the United Nations. We were also seconded to the uh, peace talks with the MNLF. Uh, and the CPLA and because of that uh, we were able to ikanga walk the corridors of, uh, um, of power in America which they call the Capitol Hill and the White House and uh, uh, during that time also I developed a very short friendship and acquaintance with uh, Joe Biden who was then a senator who would take the train I would be coming from New York uh, on Monday morning. I would take the train, uh, the first train to Washington, D.C., back to Washington, D.C. And there he was. He would, he would be taking the train at, at the Pennsylvania station. Okay, yeah. Philadelphia station. Well, because he was yeah. from Delaware and he would be going to yeah. uh, Washington, D.C. Yeah. too. Uh, I recall that uh, during his presidential uh, inaugural speech, he mentioned Delaware and, and reminisced about Delaware. But let's move on. I see in, uh, among your papers are Biden's 17 executive orders uh, and so on. Malamay kang research na ginawa? Yeah, well, uh, um, the, the question really is, uh, uh, started with this <clears throat> basic confusion in uh, U.S. policies and governance style. Because for the first time... Um, a uh, private sector figure who was not a Washington insider became the president of the Philippines uh, of, of the, the United States. States. Uh, for a while, uh, it uh, just like in 2016 here in the Philippines, it reflected a what John Paul Sort would call as a as a nausea, na suka mga tao sa mga Washington insiders just as dito in 2016 na suka sa mga dilawan. And so they wanted to try another uh, menu and that was President Trump. Unfortunately, President Trump uh, early on was overtaken by the neoconservatives in, uh, or the deep state in uh, American politics. Uh, it was uh, too much power too soon, I think, for uh, the... Uh, le let me add something at this point, no? Uh, Butch and uh, Ado. In fairness to Trump, mm -hmm. talagang winang hiya, win hiya din siya ng mga Democrats with mm -hmm. the Russia Gate uh, ano, uh, story. Mm -hmm. Na gamit yung Russia Gate, in impeach siya, hinarangan siya, here this way and that way, wala siyang magawa talaga. Ano, yung propaganda ng uh, establishment media, puro paninira sa kanya. Mm. And that created a lot of bitterness in him and his followers. Ano? Mm. Kaya napakadali din uh, saksakan ng ibang mga counter lies. Ano? Yeah. But anyway, that, going that's back where I'm coming oh, from. Not right, being yeah. a statesman, but mm. a businessman. Yeah. Alam mo, ano eh, ang, <laughs> ang instinct ng businessman eh, ano eh, uh, last man standing eh. mm. ha, di ba ganyan ang business and he took that stand no? uh, hindi ko sasabihin personalize niya but I think his weaknesses were also taken over mm. by these people on the right side mm. of the spectrum of the American politics and he swung to the right he swung to the right in terms of his immigration policies mm. he swung to the right in terms of his economic policies he swung to the right, even in handling the COVID-19 crisis. And I think that is where uh, uh, he, he met his Achilles Hill. Because if he was a young statesman, he would have been, he would have gone over these issues, over these attacks, over these impeachment proceedings over him. 
In other words, ang tagumpay. Lumubog siya. Nagtagumpay yung mga kalaban niya. Oh, nagtagumpay ah, yung mga kalaban. Sila sa kakaboyo kay kay Kasi Trump. Kasi kumbaga yung Crispa oh. Toyota, di ba? Mm-hmm. Uh, natalong Crispa dahil mm-hmm. for the first time nakuha ng Toyota ang, ang, uh, ang uh, championship because mm-hmm. Crispa started playing the game of Toyota mm-hmm. and not their own game. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what happens in uh, in conflict. And being one who has uh, so much conflict resolution in my background, I see this as uh, the explanation for the silent discrimination one feels when one goes to the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to the U.S., it's a migrant country. So much is said about freedoms and rights and all that. But at the end of the day, there is a silent discrimination. There is a white supremacist. An Anglo-Saxon uh, covering over all the problems, and uh, a lot of people uh, uh, still have this, mm-hmm. uh, and this manifested also uh, in the in the racist uh, pronouncements of President Trump, and now you see a nation divided because mm-hmm. of that. Uh, one looking forward and one looking backward. Yeah. yeah. So. Biden is in the middle of this, and I think when he took office and signed 17 executive orders, it gave a signal that this man is neither for the Republicans or the Democrats, but he is for the American people. And just tama lang yun at this point, kasi pag hindi siya lang ganyan, lalong masisira ang sinira na ng mga taong nauna sa kanya. Mm. The task of, I would not say rebuilding, but at this point, reorienting the American consciousness into the very first thing, which is the COVID-19, which Trump politicized, which Trump used as even as a banner of his racism, calling uh, the virus uh, China virus. Mm. These are symptoms of... Uh, the past na nakakapit mm. para mga talaba at, mm. uh, at uh, yeah. let, let me just uh, add this let's just show this uh, the po- one positive t- step uh, Biden has done is uh, can we show this uh, uh, image Biden expected to ban the term China virus in crackdown on COVID racism that's a good sign ano? yeah. pinapatanggal niya lahat ng mga official documents ng gobyerno ng US official documents, speeches, uh, regulations and so on yung term China virus uh, what is he doing about the race problem the race issue well, in, in the this race uh, 17 issue, uh, executive uh, orders issue, ano eh? uh, pinareview na niya yung mga uh, yung 1776 commission mm-hmm. at tinayo ni Trump mm-hmm. uh, at nilagay pa si Susan Rice no? ano bang commission na yun? Yung commission na yun, uh, in effect, distorted the role of slavery in the history of the United States. Mm-hmm. Gumawa siya ng, ano eh, gumawa siya ng uh, a body that would study, you know, a robust interagency effort requiring all federal agencies to make rooting out systemic racism central to their work. Uh, Alam mo, racism is, uh, hindi dapat pag-usapan yan eh, because hindi dapat nandyan yan eh. Hindi dapat inuungkat yan, no? Ha? But now, uh, Biden has ordered to ensure our Americans of all backgrounds have equal access to federal government resources and all that stuff. Ni-reverse na yun, no? Uh, another executive order in Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to require that the federal government does not discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation or gender, gender identity, a policy that reverses action by the Trump administration. Once, once lumutang ang racist, ang prejudice, ang inequalities and gender and any other areas, Ibig sabihin, di ba, pumapalag mm. at hindi dapat pag-usapan, dapat ayusin ka agad. Because as I said earlier, the U.S. is an emigre country. It's a country of immigration. 
if there is one thing nice about the U.S., he gets the best of all the countries, gets it to himself and make them nationals and citizens. And because of that, the U.S. became great. But these very same differences between cultures and traditions of the people who have become Americans okay. Okay, God, no. uh, has something oh. to be... Uh, uh, that the differences are to be avoided. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, nasagot ba yung point mo about Opo, the maraming, race issue? Opo, no? maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong mm -hmm. kasagutan. Uh, especially, uh, tama po kayo, racism shouldn't be talked about, no? Lalo na ngayon sa Millennial Times. Uh, in terms of uh, economy, dito sa pagbagsak allegedly ng uh, dollar sa, sa US, uh, anong ibig sabihin nito sa bawat Pilipino? Of course, siyempre, kung masa ka, siyempre, pababalitan ko yun, sasabihin ko kagad, yay, makakabili na ako ng Air Jordan. Pero may mas malalim na ugat dito eh. Kasi uh, ang pagbagsak ng ekonomiya o ng power ng dollar sa buong mundo, eh merong effect sa kanyang mga allies. Ano ho ba ito, uh, Kaado? Well, uh, in the first place, nag adjust na ating uh, Central Bank. Ang Banko Central ng Pilipinas, if you would note, has already inaugurated a clearing for uh, the renminbi. Ah, renminbi, no? the yuan. No? The yuan. So, and I'm, I'm sure, susunod dyan ang yen. Mm -hmm. Because uh, nakakaroon na ng depolarization. People are, in fact, looking into the, <laughs> to going back to the gold as a standard, no? Uh, and I think uh, the Philippines will not be uh, left behind here because we have a secret that only the Philippines has basically uh, on top. And this is the uh, a providential, uh, a providential uh, thing that we ran during the time of President Marcos. We opened uh, our labor, we had so much excess labor, and we opened it to overseas. Uh, contracts and because of that we now have even last year mm -hmm. no, in the midst of the pandemic a tremendous inflow of foreign currency not necessarily dollar huh? and so I think uh, the Philippines will grow eventually into the maturity of disentangling itself from the US dollar and the world will follow okay. we have two minutes left no we have to make a conclusion so Anong impact sa Pilipinas? You have mentioned some. Well, one very clear impact will be that uh, the remittances ng uh, America, uh, Pinoy in the U.S. to the Philippines will shrink. Ano? Mm -hmm. Delete ang conversion rate uh, and so on. So that's one. Uh, there will be fewer jobs, I think, for migrant Filipinos going there. So magahanap lang ibang merkadong Fili mga Pilipino. We have half a million OFWs that came home. Uh, and so on. So what other impact do you see? Uh, ado and... Uh, uh, dito, I think our government should be on guard Kasi, because of the influence of the new orientation of our economy now Bumababa mga consumer durables Even clothing, even cars Pero tumataas ang food Ang prices ng food Ang prices ng food, ang disposable income natin uh, on food has increased. So we have to, uh, that is a new area for livelihood ng Pilipino production. Food Correct. Nag dyan yung uh, okay. wellspring uh, ng economy natin. Kung itatap lang yan, no? We have to compress, no? We are running out of time. Uh, kung itatap lang yan ang ating gobyerno. Well, sa akin, para sa mga sang Pilipino, you know, we can talk about this economic things uh, all day long, pero a number one issue para sa Pilipino, we have no buying power. Kahit na anong tabaho natin, maganda so, man, o ma ano, pero hindi tayo nakakabili na talaga ng kinakailangan natin mga necessities. Okay, Dahil so, sobrang mahal ngayon. So, Kaado, final word, and then I'll wrap it up in uh, one sentence. Uh, it's a, it's, it will become a problem, but it also opens an opportunity that the last few months of the Duterte administration should really be given emphasis on okay. food and, then and more, production. More, more than months lang naman. Uh, about pa ng a year and a half. No? So there's a lot to be done. Uh, but uh, it's very clear we have to plan and act on this uh, challenge. Okay, uh, next we, we will discuss the next opportunity. Uh, should we have a cha-cha?
ano, uh, in order to respond to this economic challenge.